Texas Tech men's basketball has their new head coach in Grant McCaslin, but is he the right guy for the job? In today's video, I will discuss why I think it is a definitive yes, but I want to hear from you guys first. Let me know down in the comments below on the pinned comment, was Grant McCaslin the correct hire for Texas Tech men's basketball? Let's jump into this because I think that there's some points for both sides of it, right? I know that there were some people that wanted a big splash hire. Um, oh, RC, what has he done in the NCAA tournament? Like he won the NIT, big deal, whatever. Like, okay, I hear your points, but there's a lot more to being a great coach and the correct coach for Texas Tech at this current moment. I want to preface everything I'm saying right now by saying this. When Mark Adams first resigned, I knew Grant McCaslin would be the odds on favorite to land the job. Obviously didn't know that he would end up landing it, but I figured he would be the odds on favorite and he was, right? I didn't like that at the time. And to be fair, that was before I did really a lot of research and watched UNT quite a bit before this. But after watching it, I've got some stats and really just watching them play, I can feel very confident in saying, I like this hire for Texas Tech and just for a lot of reasons overall. But let's jump into it in terms of some of the reasons I wrote down. I've got four, and then I'm going to read you a tweet that I put out that I think people need to talk a little bit more about Grant McCaslin and what he did with UNT and how this offensive being slow-paced narrative in terms of, oh, that's all he ever was, is not true at all. But let's jump into this first, all right? Number one, he knows the university well, right? And he has the personality that fits West Texas. Um, you think about it. He got his start in athletics as Texas Tech Director of Ops from 1999 to 2001. His wife played soccer at Texas Tech. He's got his master's degree from Texas Tech, right? He has West Texas ties. He was the coach at Midland Junior College. Um, he obviously went to Texas Tech for his master's degree, but he has that underdog mentality, and it feels like he's got that West Texas tough about him, right? And that's something that's obviously been big right now in Texas Tech athletics. He fits that mold, right? You know, you look at him and it's like, I don't know, you know, he kind of looks like me in terms of like he wears slacks. He's got that pullover just like this, the Nike one, and he's got the hair sweep to the right side, right? And it's like, I don't know if there's a toughness about him. He's definitely tougher than me. I'll say that, but there is that toughness about it and in, about him and he's proven it, right? He's a passionate guy on the sideline and his players absolutely adore him and he's got that fiery side to him. The next aspect is this, the style of play and culture in the building. I'll talk about the style of play a little bit down the line in the video, but he's defensive minded. He's a true leader of men, right? He's all about building the right culture. And you see that in a multitude of ways. I encourage each and every one of y'all, when this video is over, to search Grant McCaslin here on YouTube. You will see a speech from him from about five years ago, right? And there's multiple other speeches you can see as well, where you can tell that this man is building a culture there and didn't that is going to pay off big time for them later on. And it absolutely does, right? There's that one line that he has something to the effect of, I don't want just the 15 seconds of fame or just one win or something like that. I want a championship, right? You got to fight through things to win a championship. This isn't just a 15 second ordeal, right? And so that's really cool to see. So I encourage you to go look that up on YouTube. That being said, I've talked to multiple people that know Grant McCaslin much better than me, that have met him on the recruiting trail, coaching circles, whatever it may be. And every one of them has said three things. All of the people I've talked to, they said he's a genuine guy, he's a family man, and he's a basketball coach. And I know that last part, well, duh, he's a basketball coach. I get it. But that's one of the biggest compliments you can give somebody in that profession, that he is a basketball coach. He gets it, right? He gets what it means to be that. And so I think it honestly says a lot about Grant McCaslin that everybody I've talked to, albeit four or five people, but even other people that I've talked to about Grant McCaslin that know people I don't that know Grant McCaslin, everything is positive. And I think that's a really telling sign. All right. But before we get into the back half of this list, right, what's the biggest positive about hiring Grant McCaslin? Is it the defensive aspect? Is it the culture aspect? I want you to let me know down in the comments below. All right, I'm going to go to this one. And the last one is the one you're probably going to want to pay attention to because it's got the stats. But we'll start with this. 
All he does is win, man. And I've talked about this in other videos. He's got a 70% winning percentage as a head coach in college basketball. 70%. You sign up for that every day of the week. He had won three straight Conference USA titles before this past year. And the only reason he didn't was because FAU and Dusty May have the most wins in college basketball and are playing down in Houston right now in the Final Four. Right. So you think about that. He gets the most out of his players. I've heard the recruiting concerns and he signed guys that are in the top 380 um, in terms of their recruiting class. A few of them went to UNT. And I mean, that's really all you can ask for at UNT. Right. I don't know what y'all are expecting him to get. But I think the thing that's most telling about him is he goes and gets guys he identifies and they can scout talent and then get that talent to where it needs to be. Perfect example is Tyler Perry. If you watch that game in the championship of the NIT against UAB, you know who Tyler Perry is, right? And you look at what he went through to get to UNT. He's from a small town in Oklahoma, 400 people, didn't have a Division I offer out of JUCO, right? They go in, they make him a Conference USA Player of the Year. Now, obviously, Perry had a lot to do with that, but I think that there's something to be said about identifying talent and developing it right? Even the ones that are the diamonds in the rough. And I'm not saying this is going to happen all the time, but there's something to that. Now you have the facilities, the resources, the backing of Texas Tech, plus you know how to scout. There's something to be said for that if you're Coach McCaslin. And another aspect of him just winning. He's won at least 20 games in every year that he's been a college head coach. And the one year that he didn't, they won 19 and upset Purdue in the first round of the NCAA tournament as a 13 seed, right? He wins. That's what he does. And he does it in a multitude of ways. And that's the next point about Grant McCaslin. He knows how to adjust, right? And I think that that's one thing that really, uh, I guess, probably grinded my gears last year um, about Mark Adams was it felt like he was dead set in his ways a lot of time. And that's not trying to be a knock. What, what got him there worked really, really well. But at the end of the day, I just didn't think there was enough adjustments. Right. Well, Grant McCaslin, you cannot say that about his tenure at UNT. So I tweeted this out. Be sure to follow me at RCMB323 on Twitter, giving way too many Texas Tech nuggets, um, men's basketball nuggets, I should say, over the past few days. I swear I'm probably in the top 1% of Bart Torvark's website. But I tweeted this. UNT ranked 32nd in adjusted offense and 5th in effective field goal percentage in 2020. They also ranked top 21 in 2-point percentage, 3-point percentage, and free throw percentage. In 2021, they ranked 40th in effective field goal percentage while ranking top 65 in 3-point, 2-point, and free throw percentage. Now, 2020, obviously at the peak, still really solid numbers in 2021. If you're in the top 65, that's pretty damn good. You're talking about the top what? 15% of college basketball in that regard. Then you go on to 2022, and this is where things changed for the Mean Green. You could tell that they made defense a much more point of emphasis, right? And really made it a focal point of their team. In 2022, their adjusted defense was 22nd. They repeated that in 2023. In 2022, their defensive effective field goal percentage was 28th in the country. This past year, the season that just ended yesterday, if you're watching this on Friday, they were fifth, right? So they made it a point of emphasis. They changed. They went from a heavily offensive team to a heavy defensive team. What does that show me? Oh, by the way, they ranked top 16 in limiting three-point percentage to their opponent, right? My point is this when it comes to Grant McCaslin and what he did at UNT. They made a mindful change to their roster, knowing what they had and was returning and what was coming in, right? And they made a change from being an offensive Citric unit to a defensive centric unit, right? And it worked wonders, right? What they wanted to do was make every possession difficult and limit threes and contest them defensively, right? And offensively, they slowed down the game, used the pick and roll, and got as many quality looks as they possibly could off of the pick and roll. For me, this is something that just screams to me that, yes, I get it. The offense was slow the past two years, and they were the slowest offense in college basketball this past year. But when it comes down to it, I don't think you should just credit what he has done at UNT just because of these past two years and what they look like offensively. He's proven that he can coach teams that are really good at offense, right? He's also coached really good defensive teams. I think that is a perfect scenario for Texas Tech because what it shows me is this. 
Grant McCaslin is not going to be stuck in a box. He is going to see and observe what is on the floor, go in there with an open mind, and then evaluate and say, okay, I thought maybe we'd be okay at making three-point shots. We're not. We're going to do a lot of pick and roll and dive to the basket or whatever it may be, right? He's going in there with an open mind and putting his players in the best situation to succeed. And better yet, on top of that, he's developing them on the court and getting the best out of them in their potential. I think it's a great hire. Again, I was skeptical at first. Um, in terms of hearing the rumors about him being the you know lead guy in terms of odds on favor, I was skeptical, right? I wanted John Jacobs, um, a guy like that, maybe even Alvin Brooks from Baylor as well. But you get a Scott Drew guy, that was a big point of emphasis for me. A lot of people aren't going to like to hear that, but I'm all about the Scott Drew tree right now. I think it's one of the best in college basketball. And you get a guy in Grant McCaslin that you were interested in two years ago when he was kind of a finalist quote unquote it was Mark Adams Darvin Ham and Grant McCaslin is really those last three guys um, in that race and now you get your guy signed to a six-year deal at 18 million dollars he knows the state of Texas and he knows how to get the absolute most out of his players he's proven it everywhere he's been and he's an absolute winner it's that simple. That is what Grant McCaslin is. Again, be sure to follow me on Twitter at RCMB323. And if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We're giving you daily Texas Tech videos. We'll be talking about the transfer portal, uh, Texas Tech targets in the transfer portal. We'll talk about Grant McCaslin's staff as that comes out and much, much more right here on your one-stop shop for everything. Texas Tech Athletics, of course. We're talking about the Back to 12 podcast channel.